In this video, we're going to look at atomic symbols and subatomic particles. So just as a reminder, in the beginning of chapter 2, uh, sections 2.1 and 2.2 are something that you really need to read on your own. This is a review of high school. So um, a lot of the things that we're going to talk about in this lecture video um, are a summarization of the findings of many, many years of history that went into the discovery of the three main subatomic particles, which are protons, neutrons, and electrons. You should have an idea of the ways in which those particles were discovered, and it gives you some background information on things like the AMU, which we're going to talk about in just a second, the atomic mass unit, that are really important for you to know and that are just review from high school. These are things that you should kind of have in your toolkit from a regular um, honors level or AP level or even a regular level high school course. Okay, so the three main subatomic particles are protons, oops, are protons, neutrons, and electrons. And the thing that we're going to be concerned with are their charge, their mass, and their location in the atom. So let's start with protons. So protons get a charge of positive one. Um, and they are the, uh, so proton itself indicates that it's the pro of proton sort of indicates that it's positive. Neutrons are neutral, so they get a charge of zero. And electrons are, have the negative charge of negative one. So in an atom, the electronic balance is balanced between the protons and the electrons. Uh, and when these get out of balance, we wind up with what we call an ion, where you have an overall charge of that, um, of that atom, which becomes then called an ion. So in terms of mass, protons and neutrons have the same amount of mass. They are assigned one AMU. And the AMU is an atomic mass unit. It's basically the definition of the mass of a proton and a neutron. So these get a mass of one AMU. Um, and these make up the vast majority of the mass of the atom. The, the electrons are essentially have no mass, they're, or their mass is much, much, much smaller than one AMU. So we say these are essentially zero AMUs. They do have some mass, but it's much, much less than one AMU. That's, that's the way we sort of define it. But for functional, like for the functional purposes of chemistry, they don't contribute to the overall mass of the atom. And then in terms of location, this is the definition of our understanding of the structure of the atom. So knowing where these subatomic particles are located means that you really understand what the structure of the atom is. So protons and neutrons are both located in what we call the nucleus. And the electrons are in what we call the electron cloud or the orbitals that surround that nucleus. So you kind of get a picture that looks like this. You have this sort of positive nucleus with the positive protons and the neutrons, and then you have the electrons that um, orbit around that in the electron clouds. So that, that nuclear model of the atom is really important, and it's something that took many years and many experiments to come up with. So those are the three subatomic particles and the main things you need to know about them. The next thing we're going to look at is atomic symbols. And again, this is review um, from your sort of your high school level course. So let's look at the atomic symbol for iron. So up here we put a 56, down here we put a 26, and um, and that's it for the, atom the atomic symbol. So there are a couple of different things that we have to dissect here. Uh, in the middle, what we have is we have the element symbol. So if you look at the periodic table, every element gets a symbol. So for example, sodium gets Na, lithium gets Li, iron gets Fe, oxygen gets O. Every element in the periodic table has a symbol that's associated with it. And um, that symbol basically is a shorthand for the name of the element. So when you see Fe, that tells you that you have iron. Now, you will have to memorize these off of the periodic table. The periodic table that you're going to get during the exam is not going to have the names of the different elements. 
So, for example, if we write iron and we ask, if we say, give us the atomic symbol for iron plus one uh, or iron one, uh, you are going to have to know that iron is Fe. So uh, that's something to start thinking about. You may want to print out a periodic table that has the names of the various atoms in it and then start like making sure that you know what symbol goes with what uh, atom. Okay, so now let's take a look at these numbers. So these numbers are really important. There are three numbers or three parts of this that we have to take a look at. Um, two will always be filled in and one will uh, and one will not. So down here we have the atomic number, uh, and this gets it, it, this may also get the symbol Z. Up here we have what we call the mass number, and then over here we have the charge. And the reason why the, this one is blank, there's nothing in the charge spot, is because this particular atom does not have a charge, so it's not an ion. When an atom develops a charge, then it becomes what we call an ion. So uh, in this case, there it's not an ion, so the electrons and the protons are balanced. So let's start to kind of dissect these things. So the atomic number is the number of protons. And really, this is probably one of the most critical parts of the symbol because the number of protons tell you which atom you have. Um, and it, I'm sorry, it, it doesn't tell you which atom you have. It's actually even more than that. It tells you which element you have. So I'm oversimplifying here. So if, for example, you have something with 26 uh, protons, that's iron. And if you look at the periodic table, every single element has its own number of protons. So the number of protons is what actually defines the element. What we're going to see is that we can actually have um, elements with different numbers of neutrons. And that's where we get into what's called isotopes. So the defining thing that makes an element an element is the atomic number. And actually, in some cases, the atomic number doesn't even have to be put down um, or written down. Oftentimes what you'll see is you'll just see something that looks like this, iron 56. And the reason that they can do that is because if you know it's iron, you can look up on the periodic table what the number of, um, what the atomic number is. So um, the fact that you have iron itself allow, and the fact that the atomic number is related to that element you can look that up directly from the periodic table. So that's that's kind of something that's important and should be mentioned. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have the atomic number because you can always get the atomic number from the periodic table. Okay, so the next one that's important is the mass number. And the mass number is related to the two things that actually have the mass in the, in the atom, and that is the number of protons and the number of neutrons. So when you add the number of protons plus the number of neutrons, you get the mass number. And remember, because these are in units of AMU, the mass number will have a, will have a, a unit of AMUs. So remember, each proton and each neutron has a one AMU mass. So in, in this case, the charge uh, is related to the balance between the uh, numbers of electrons and the numbers of uh, protons because the protons and the electrons are what are charged in the element. So when we have more protons than we have electrons, we, we have more positives than we have negatives, we get a positive ion or a cation. Um, when we have more electrons than we have protons, then we get a negative ion, we have more negatives than positives, and that is what we call an anion. So the way that we can do this in shorthand is we can basically take the number of protons minus the number of electrons. And this makes sense, right? Because if we have more protons, so let's say we have, in the case of iron, let's say that we have 27 protons. I'm sorry, we have... Um, we, we can't have 27 protons, it would be a different element then. We have 26 protons, and let's say we only had 25 electrons. So we have an imbalance of, ele of, electron of protons and electrons. 
Um, when we take 26 minus 25, we get a plus 1 or a positive charge. So when the number of protons equals the number of electrons, we call this a neutral atom. When the number of protons is greater than the number of electrons, this is what we call a cation. When the number of protons is less than the number of electrons, this is what we call an anion. Okay, so let's take a look at a lecture problem that involves atomic symbols. So let's take a look at a problem and see if we can start to um, work through some of this. So this is lecture problem one. It's the first part of lecture problem one. So this, this one says an atom or ion contains 79 protons, 100 neutrons, and 76 electrons. So it says write the atomic uh, or ionic symbol. So the first thing we have to do is we have to get out our periodic table. And um, if we want to write a atomic symbol, um, what we need to do is we need to identify the atom that has 79 protons. So we go to the periodic table and we look up the atomic number for 79 and we see that that's gold. So we can write the symbol for gold, AU. Okay, so that's our start. Now let's start working through, and we can put down the 79 here because that's our atomic number. Now let's start working on some of the other parts of this. So let's work on the, um, the mass number. So if we want to get the mass number, this is equal to the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So this is going to equal our 79 protons, and then it says this thing has 100 neutrons, so we add 100 to that. So this is going to give us 179 AMUs. So the mass number is going to be 179. Okay, and then we have 76 electrons. So now what we have to do is we have to figure out the charge. So if we remember, the charge is going to equal the number of protons minus the number of electrons. So in this case, we have 79 protons minus 76 electrons. So that is going to equal 73. I'm sorry, that's going to equal 3 for the charge, a plus 3 charge. So we write up here plus 3. So that would be the correct um, atomic symbol for this using the various equations. And you can work in the reverse direction. Obviously, we could give you a problem where we gave you the symbol and asked you something about um, that compound. So this is an introduction to uh, atomic symbols and um, an introduction to the various subatomic particles and their sort of properties. In the next video, we're going to look at what happens when we start to change the ratio of protons and neutrons. We get a, a thing called an isotope, which is where we basically have the same element but with different mass numbers.